Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Gaming Night. Uh, this is uh, pickups um, and unboxings uh, for this week, and they're gonna be in the order that they were picked up in and ordered and stuff. Uh, the first one I'm gonna show you is one my fiance wanted uh, for her birthday, so I went online. And she, there wasn't much information on it. Found one person did did a review on it, um, and just the, what they the, what they said the game was you know based uh, similar to was just definitely we, we just had to take, give it a look so we'll eventually be playing this doing a live stream of this but um, <clears throat> it's called uh, 221 Baker Street the master detective game this was made in 1975 republished in 1977 um, so it's pretty old so this came with like an order sheet so we can order the stuff if the site still uh, lets us order stuff. Yeah, this company basically I guess repackages older games and stuff like that. This is the book. I can't show you too much because it's got the instructions on how to play and it's got solutions and stuff like that in there. So I can't really show you that. Then it comes with 20 cases to solve uh, and like they're basically uh, stories so this game's got a little bit more depth to it than say Clue does and you're going to be going around the board to these different areas and it tells you once you get to the area you get a clue and then you have to literally solve the clue so you get like a clue and sometimes it's, it'll be like part one of four it might be multiple parts to it so you might only have one part of it um, but you might not Get it. Some are probably going to be pretty. Are, you know, pro, are, the book gave you an example, but the one I think it was an example was too easy. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, but you know, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit more challenging than that. Um, so, like Clue, you'll have a board. This board is not like it's like I said. It you could tell it, it's kind of clueish. Just because of the board, but uh, you're going to be getting to these different locations, uh, like the board heads in, and once you get there, you get a clue card, provided that a player did not play, put a uh, Scotland Yard card on it. If they put a Scotland Yard card on it, you can, and if you get a key, you can basically unlock it so you can get that clue. Otherwise, it's sealed off from that from you. If you start with one one uh, key. I think one. I think one Scotland Yard card. I'm not too sure. We haven't played it yet. And uh, <clears throat> you will get um, these sheets here. And what makes this game different than Clue is even when you get to the location to get the clue, you have to figure out what the clue means. So there might be like uh, it might say something like uh, like a riddle. And you'll have to piece it together, and then once you get all the solutions done, you have to you have to get the, you don't have to understand how the how the you know all the intricate details, but you have to at least be able to come up with a solution. You can't just be like you know partially get the all the the facts that your character gathered actually has to work with that case because if there's anything that's not um, correct, you automatically lose the case. And then you're out of the game. So, so there's the Scotland Yard cards, and then there's the key cards. And you only can have one key card at any time, so it prevents complete hosiery of the players. I would show you the booklet, but it's got solutions to the. And I like the pieces too. They got like the cap for Sherlock Holmes, his magnifying glass. I think this is a hmm. I don't know what that is really off the top of my head. So my fancy thinks that looks like a almost like a fire hydrant, but I think it's a, a one of those uh, fancy uh, beer mugs. Uh, the violin, I believe that is, and Sherlock's pipe. So it's 
get like stories written and adventures are all written like like uh, a uh, game of uh, like how Sherlock Holmes mysteries are. So we're looking forward to breaking this out and doing a live feed for you guys. Hopefully we can order stuff, the uh, expansions you can get for it. Because this is apparently the, it's very basic, you know, it's not like, looks like it's that hard to get a hold of the stuff. Uh, next thing I got picked up was Deadpool. I got basically two games half off. I, the other one I didn't, I had, it's being shipped. But this is Deadpool. I'm not playing, I'm playing it anytime soon. Because I have to finish uh, a few other games on my PSN. Like Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. And, and start Nino Kuni. Well, not start it, but finish it. Um, <clears throat> and then we picked up uh, the Three Little Pigs here. It's a um, board game for uh, 7 and up. So it's something we can play with my niece and nephew. And it's still uh, pretty... Uh, you know, a family game, so you, I mean, even if you're, you're an adult, you'll probably still enjoy it. It's made by the same companies that made King of Tokyo. So, so, it looks like a book, you know, pretty much, and it opens up like that. And, it's got, little story in here a three little pig story and it's got uh, the rule book very simplistic it's, it's very straightforward you're trying to keep your house from being destroyed and you're trying to build the uh, houses you got the, the wood you got the straw And you got the bricks. You can combine any one, but like obviously, if you look at it here, you have a little spinner. You're supposed to blow on it. Hold on. Like it. I usually get it going pretty good, but I already had it at one point. Um, seen it play, but anyways, you probably loosen it up or something after a few tries. But and um. Obviously, the bricks harder to get on here, and the straw is more common in the woods. So it's, <clears throat> and then you got the dice with different symbols on them. You got the ground floor, the middle floor, and then the roof, and then I believe you, yeah, you get those. This one's got a wolf on it. This one's got a wolf on it. So, so I think you, you know, basically, yeah, like I said, you don't want to roll. There's three wolves. I think if you roll three wolves, then there's a chance of knocking you know, someone's house down and wrecking it. So. And then you get points based on how many flowers I think are in your house. I think in the windows. I really haven't really um, got a chance to read all the rules and stuff, but it's like I said, it's not really difficult. So that's that one. So we'll play this one probably Sunday because I'm probably gonna be snowed in. We got some nasty weather. <coughs> And then, the game that my uh, fiance and I uh, played today, uh, Relic Runners. Uh, we played this at uh, my friend's hobby shop, and uh, so <clears throat> it was fun. So she and I put in in on it. So. So normally we don't. So, so 
like I said, I'll show you with it. Got the instruction manual. The game is like I said, it's Days of Wonder. It's very simplistic, but it's complicated and strategy-wise. Those are your taught uh, victory points and other tiles to getting certain things on the board. It's got a lot of components here. The the road tiles. Those are basically you. This is the purple temple tiles. And they each do different things based on like so the game's got some random elements. These are the blue ones, or blue bluish purple, and they give you victory points which you keep hitting. And then some of these actually have like actions that do things to help you one-time use in the game, like uh. <clears throat> And then uh, the green ones. These are actually the actions too you can get. Some are for scoring. And uh, this is the board. So and then you get boxes. Tiles, <clears throat> and then you get the these really nice components. Like I'm not gonna take them out of there right now. These are the crystal skulls. This is your gold in the game and your uh, money. This is uh, another totem, blue one, the purple ones, and green frog ones. So these are all like the relics you're trying to get, at, get sought after. So there's like many ways to get points in the game. You have to kind of like um, figure out what your characters, you know, based on your tiles you collected, you know, using them to your advantage to score points. We played that today. Um, it was fun. It's a fun game. Uh, I thought that definitely we'll do a live feed of that too. Obviously. We got a lot of stuff to punch out, and then it'll all fit right in the box. No problem. This thing's pretty heavy. And uh, it's a very fast game. I mean, literally the game. Um, Time, what's the time frame on it? Say 40 to 80 minutes. I mean, literally, I think we finished it in 35 minutes. So, if that, I mean, it, it goes quick. I mean, you have a few actions and it goes really quick. So, um, sorry to, uh, this video is pretty long for those who don't like long videos, but, um, just wanted to keep up with you guys. So, there's a massive storm, like I said. So if anything we do play, it's going to be the three little pigs, my niece and nephew. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll save Relic Runners for when we uh, get my friends over here. Maybe my niece and nephew could play this one. I think it's eight and up. Ugh. Ten and up, but they could play it. It's not that difficult. Strategy-wise, it can be challenging, but it's still fun. So once again, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.